questions right now. But maybe when I get in the ring, he'll present something. Or, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, and benefits. I don't know, my timing's there, everything's there, so I don't know if there's any benefits or negatives or anything. I, I'm really not focused on that. I'm, I'm more just focused on how sharp I am in the gym, making sure my sparring sharp. I don't really think about benefits or negatives when I'm in the gym. Hago 32 y 1, has perdido en 17 años desde su debut profesional. ¿Qué es lo que mejora hacia arriba del ring? Diego, he's 32 and 1, but he hasn't lost awesome in 17 years since his pro debut. What does he do best in the ring? I would say that he seems like a very crafty veteran. Um, that he knows like a lot of little tricks and whatnot, and he knows how to evade punches. I think that's his best quality. Um, but you know what I do. So when I get in there, I'll be able to see everything, and I'll be able to time them and get them out of there. La pelea se lleva a cabo en 139 libras. ¿Cuál fue la mentalidad, cuál fue la decisión por hacer en ese peso? Fights taking place at 139 pounds. What was the uh, thinking behind that? Well, I mean, I talked with my team and they talked with their team and, you know, after 15 months, I guess everybody wanted just to have a little easier weight cut uh, himself as well. So, you know, I, I don't even, I don't mind making 135 either. Though. I can make 135. As you see, I'm already cutting weight pretty good. I could have made 135, but why not do 139? <laughs> Feel good? Tu primer campamento con Joe Goosen, ¿cuál fueron tus mejorías en este campamento? This is your first camp with Joe Goosen. What were your biggest gains with him at the house? I think, uh, I think both trainers have you know, great benefits to them, and Joe is just another great mind in the boxing ring. He's very old school, so he brings a lot of history to myself, and he knows the game very well. Uh, a lot of old school type of tricks, tactics that I enjoy to learn. So I think that is a refreshment. Uh, and really, to make a great fighter, it comes from within a uh, fighter himself. As you see, there's many fighters with Freddie Rush, but not all of them are Manny Pacquiao. You know, so really, you gotta see it as the fighter is really what makes the trainer as great as he is because it has to come within the fighter. If it doesn't, you could have, you know, the greatest trainer ever to ever live, but they're not all gonna be Muhammad Ali and Floyd Mayweather. Describe the difference of ser el único en un gimnasio con Joe y como era en el otro gimnasio donde eras uno de muchos campeones. Describe the difference of being the sole focus of a trainer like Joe Gustin as opposed to the other gym where you were one of many champions in the gym. Well, no, there's, there's different things, you know. I mean, when I was in the, the training camp with Eddie, it was good to see Canelo train and uh, other great fighters train because I'm a very good visual learner. So when I see something and I like it and I could apply it to myself, I will. So that was one good benefit of being in that gym. But here, uh, as I'm just to myself, I'm, I'm in a better mentality wise and I train harder because all I'm thinking about is grinding, 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 not watching nobody else. So that's all I'm thinking about. So everything has its benefits, but I think I'm maturing and I'm becoming obviously my own complete fighter that you know now kids will look at me and see how to fight so as I get better uh, I'll become that role model. ¿Cómo te sientes de ser el titular en el Almo Dome, un lugar donde han peleado Julio César Chávez, Oscar de la Hoya, Saúl Canelo Álvarez y ahora te toca a ti? You're headlining at the Alamo Dome, a place that has been filled for Canelo Álvarez, for Oscar de la Hoya, for Julio César Chávez and now they're going to show up for you. Yeah, it's very exciting. Texas they just have very, very great people there. I mean, the, the atmosphere is always great. Uh, but really, I'm just happy to be in the ring. Uh, there could be nobody there or everybody there. Just the fact that I'm, I'm in the ring now, it feels so good. And, and wait,
there's always great people, and that makes me very happy. Uh, but bottom line is, I'm just happy to be back in the ring. I could care if there was one person there or a million people there. Just the fact that I'm in there, I'm grinding, and I'm, I'm doing what I love, it really, it really gets me fired up. So you're gonna see, a, you're gonna just see me just at my happiest. For sure. How important is boxing for your well-being? ¿Qué tan importante es el boxeo para tu salud y para para tu mentalidad? I just think that boxing is very important for me because uh, it keeps me uh, focused, it keeps me grounded. Uh, I'm a person that, you know, I need a goal, a goal at task, and I need something to look forward to, and boxing does that for me, and I love to do it. So, the boxing is, is my life, and I love to do it, and, and I love to do it for many years at the top level. La mano. Ya pasaron cinco meses desde que la muñeca... Eh, tu cirugía, ¿cómo va tu recuperación y cómo, qué tan confiado estás en esa mano? It's been about five months since you had that uh, wrist surgery. How confident are you in that weapon, which is part of your arsenal, very important part? Very important. It's very important and I'm very happy that my right hand is working completely fine, uh, cracking people. <laughs> and I'm even happier that it wasn't my left. My left is my best butt. So, uh, you know, you know, right hand's going to do the dirty work, and hopefully the left hand finishes the job. Now, it looks like the lightweight titles are going to be held up for the rest of the year with George Campos is taking on Devin Haney. Twice. You know Haney really well. Give me the scouting report on that fight. You know, uh, me and Devin, we have a long history because we fought in amateurs many times, and to be honest, we were the only ones in the finals every time, so it's kind of funny how <clears throat> things are going to meet up one day. But I think Devin, if he... Uh, boxes correctly and you know nothing funky happens happens in Australia I think he wins that fight fairly easy uh, and I'm not trying to discredit Campos in any way he's a, he's a good fighter but I think Devin's reach his range his timing and just everything he has is going to be the job looks like uh, the relationship between Floyd Mayweather and uh, Gervonta Davis may come to an end if that happens is that a fight you see in the meantime before you get a world title shot I think that's the most mean, meaningful fight for me. Javante uh, Davis and myself uh, would would be you know, super exciting, and everybody would get their money for it, that's for sure. So uh, I'm looking to do great things in the sport, so I think a fight with Javante Davis would, would do us both very well. Y finalmente, ¿qué esperas de tu pelea el próximo 9 de abril en contra de Manuel Tego y qué puede esperar el público? Finally, what can the fans expect from your fight against Emmanuel Tego on the 9th of April? I mean, I'm going to go in there and do what I always do. You know, you got to have your uh, eyes glued onto the screen at all times because you just never know when I'm going to explode. I kind of just uh, wait for that moment. So just make sure you're paying attention at all times. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you after your fight April 9th.
about maturation. How is that? Say maturation or mature. Yeah. So how, what's that like? How is that like? Uh, physically? 
Physically, I feel great. You know, uh, obviously, it's been a hard training camp. I've been training super hard and you know nonstop, so my body's a little, you know, a little bit sore here and there. But those will clear up the week of the fight, and I'll be ready to go at full peak performance. All right, uh, the weights you're uh, fighting at 139. Do you feel it's gonna benefit you? Then going down to the 135? I mean, four pounds, I mean, how much can that really benefit me in boxing, really? Uh, I think that I'll be the same way that I would be at 135. I really, I really do think so. Um, I'm, I'm just growing naturally, so uh, I'll be expected to probably walk into the ring about 46, 47, strong, kind of where I walk around, so you'll see me at my best. All right, and how soon or uh, before you think you jump into a uh, next uh, er category, weight category? Just depends on what's out there, you know, what opportunities present themselves. Obviously, the 135 titles will be tied up because of uh, Derek and Cambosis, so, and they're going to be fighting twice. They have a rematch clause, so uh, I'll be looking to see what opens up, and uh, I'll be able to fight anybody. Either 140, 135, really good. All right. Uh, and uh, what, what, do you, what would you say it's... Uh, the, the, mo the most change you've had with uh, with your new trainer? Uh, What's the, the, the biggest difference, I guess? I mean, I would just say maybe communication and chemistry-wise. You know, obviously, Joe, uh, we relate to a lot of things. I mean, me and Eddie have been able to share with uh, ourselves. I mean, we laugh a lot. Uh, but with Joe, you know, we're able to have deep conversations about other things that so it's been great. It's been a great little uh, training camp. Perfect. And uh, what can you say to your fans out there? Uh, thank you guys for always supporting me. And uh, you know, I always leave it out online. Uh, I make sure that uh, I uh, remember you guys as I step in that ring. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. How would you describe the months? Uh, yeah. uh, miserable sucks, you know, boxing's obviously my life, so, you know, it wasn't the best time, but, you know, everybody got to go through a little bit of storm as long as you keep grinding and get out of it, sun will shine one day, so uh, I'm just happy to be out of the little storm I was in, and now I'm ready to get back in this ring. Um, you're in the area, you're still in the area, um, wh why did you decide to stay here? I love San Diego. I mean, who doesn't love San Diego, really? I mean, if you live out here long enough, you're going to know San Diego is the shit. So it's like, I love it here. So, uh, I mean, I'm not going to really, I don't really want to train anywhere else, to be honest. You, you've changed uh, trainers. And how's that adaptation for you? You know, uh, it's been great. You know, I mean, really, I like training with whoever, you know. It doesn't really, to me, it's like, are you a great fighter or you're not a great fighter? That's really what it comes down to. Are you, can you find it within yourself? Nobody got to ask me to run. Nobody got to ask me to train. You don't got to ask me to do anything. I don't need any motivation. But it's been great to have a guy that knows the history of the game, that knows so much little tricks. I love learning. I love, you know, picking up new stuff. So Joe's been just a great, great person to have. Okay, Ryan, tell us how's your experience training with the legendary Joe Boos? Uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, I trained with him before in the past, and he's been a great, great person to work with. And have you, are you doing anything different? He has his own drills, and he makes me do them, and uh, I do them. That's it. And what type of performance can we expect from you on April 9th? A great performance for me to go in there and do what I do. And if victorious on April 9th, would you like to face the winner of Haney versus Cambozos? I mean, I would love to, but they have a rematch clause, so it's going to take a very long time. So I'm really just looking forward to whatever opens up, and I'll be ready for it. You know, I mean, they're going to be they're going to be tied up for some time. And who do you have in that fight? I mean, I got Haney, so uh, I think that he wins it. And a final message for all your fans. Hey, thank you guys for always supporting me. Uh, I'll be ready. April 9th, and uh, leave it all in the ring every time. Thank you so much. Of course, God bless you. Ryan, what's up, man? What's up, FightHype.com. Here with the sensation himself, Ryan Garcia. Ryan, man, um, do you think this fight could kind of go like the Romero Duna and Francisco Fonseca fight, end early? 
I mean, it has that feel to it, right? Uh, I'm just, I'm pretty good at fighting shorter guys. You know, that's kind of my expertise. I'm used to it. So he's a little shorter. Uh, and, you know, he likes to box. I mean, a lot of people, they always try to pressure me. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, maybe it does end up like that. Maybe it, it does. I, I don't really know too much of the guy, this guy. He's kind of a funky fighter. You know, if you watch him, he kind of does a lot of funny stuff, but you know, I'll stay calm and then just surgically break him down or knock him out. You never know. Do you think those quick knockouts come against guys like that? Cause they're short trying to get in close and that's the range for that left hook. We know before. Yeah. I mean, I have pretty good timing. You know, and I think that's always separated myself from a lot of fighters. It's just my timing and my accuracy. So you probably could see that in this fight. Uh, but if you bring something out of me, then you'll see it. You know, you see my eyes light up. Just like Luke Campbell, you know, he brought something out of me, and I had to dig deep and get to him, you know, take it to him. You know, usually I like boxing on the outside. Obviously, I'm taller and counter you, but you know, Luke Campbell made me take it to him, and I did So There's, you never know. And speaking of your timing and your power, you know, Roly Romero, he said, he actually feels you're the hardest puncher in the division, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, besides himself. How good is his power, and what chances do you give him a beating tank? I think that he's severely underestimated uh, because the thing with Roly is he, he may look funky, but he knows his funky moves really good and his range, and he, he doesn't really like to, like, put himself in danger. Like, it's just a weird way of doing it, but he does it the way he's supposed to do it, like – I don't know how to explain it, but just know that he does have some good pop in his shots, and he could knock out Tank if Tank's not careful. But then again, Tank is small. You know, there's just a lot of attributes that might be against Tank this fight, to be honest. But, you know, Tank is a special fighter, and maybe he could find something special to do, and he could pull greatness out of him. We'll see. But it doesn't seem like he wanted to fight him too much. That's the strange thing about it. It's like, oh, man. But he should just buckle down and say, fuck it, I'm fighting for scope. And, uh, yeah. and lastly, Ryan, lastly, Ryan, um, you already, I already heard you talk to Bernardo and a few guys. You got Haney over Cambosis. Can you give us the science as to why? You, you know Devin I mean, so well. I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like answering that because it's like that fight, it's going to be technical. They're going to just do their thing. Like to me, it doesn't excite me because nobody has that grit to like, all right, I'm going to fucking make a sting. I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to knock his ass. Like Sugar Ray Leonard, he was like, I'm going to knock out Tommy Hearns. Like, yeah, I'm going to box you, but watch. I'm gonna start beating your ass and knocking you out. That's how I think. You know what I mean? I wanna, I wanna go in there and do something special every time I touch that ring. You know, I could box you, I can play with you, but at the end of the day, I'm thinking, how can I put a statement on you? You know what I mean? You're nowhere near my level. That's why I was thinking with Campbell. It's like, yeah, I could counter you, I could beat you. You know, I could have took it slowly, but I was like, nah, I gotta find a way to knock him out. And then, you know, I <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. Hey guys, Ryan is still doing his interviews. We're just here waiting for him to get in that boxing ring and show us the hand speed and the combination. So, these guys see him over there still, still holding court with some media. So, um, yeah, just sit tight and we're, we're just waiting to see him work out. So, keep it locked in, everyone.
that go through there huh? and uh, you know Tijuana was a great experience you know it got me got me feeling the little eight ounce buzz you know I always remember that that, that was a good, good good time how do you remember most the trips making back to your father so I think just like sometimes they just switch up pony on me <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it was it was like no rules but it, I don't know it was just a good it was just I don't know it brought good vibes I think Tijuana like it's just they love fighting you know they want you to fight so I loved it about and the, the crowd and the food the food was good yeah. <laughs> you like the food the crowd was rowdy but they hey, they cheer for you they cheer for you it was crazy did you recommend other young boxers to the hold in Tijuana yeah if they want to uh, you know for the first like maybe five, five, six fights you know have your fights there get your experience because you know it's different with little gloves you know you got to get used to how it land so I think if you want to gain experience, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and for this fight, uh, what, what do you expect for you? What do you see? Right. Right. Greatness. Greatness. You're going to see some great stuff. Right. I promise you that. Because uh, that's just who I am. I'm always you know, looking to do something amazing. You know? I mean, since, since the first time I fought on ESPN, I said I wanted to be on ESPN Support Center. Then I knocked the guy in 30 seconds. So, you know, that's just my mentality. Like, let me find something great to do. Like, I want to I find it. I'll, I'll keep going hard until I find that shot. Or, you know, I got to do what I got to do to do something amazing. And how do you feel it to catch the attention of, like, three generations of, of boxing fans? The young ones, the old ones, the middle ones. Just do what I want to watch. I mean, just to make sure I separate myself from this guy, you know. It's one thing to be the guy you're supposed to be, but it's how you beat him. You got to make sure... You should not have been in this ring with you. That's my mentality. Every time I step in the ring and they say, oh, Ryan's better than this guy, yeah, but I make sure they know that. I knock him out either in one round or in two rounds. That's it. But you never know with this fight. I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm going to knock him out in two rounds. I don't like to say that, but I know that I'll be looking for some good shots. So. Yeah. I know you have this fight, but what is your dream fight, Ryan? My dream fight? got to be Tank Davis. I mean, that's, to me, it's just... There's going to be so many celebrity stars there. The atmosphere you got, you know, it's just the vibe will be immaculate. And I will always remember that fight. So that's my dream fight. And that's a fight that has to happen. So time there's nothing else. I want him to, I, I do want him to win against Rollies, but I feel like Rollies could win. So I'm like, please don't lose. But then I'm like, Rollies is a cool dude. I don't, I don't really care if that is, bro. Crazy. And to finish, I uh, want to say a, a, a message for the Tijuana Mexico fans. Man, I love you guys. Thank you for always supporting me. I got a got a soft spot for you guys. I was out there grinding as a young 17-year-old kid fighting at the booth. Well, I, I would fight like three times in, in two weeks. 
<laughs> I'll go in. So, yeah, love you guys. Thanks. Thank you for the yep. So, I have to pull him so we can do three minutes group. I'll start with you, Ryan. So, you're settling in with Joe Goosen, yeah, right? I am. What's Joe toughest on you about now after these things? What, what's he been tough with you? He just, he has to tell me to stop. <laughs> he's like, man, you need, you need to chill out because he's like, you're a maniac. So it's really like, we have such a good connection that, you know, if he has to tell me to pick it up, like, say I'm like hitting the bag and then I start moving and talking, he's like, all right, get back to the bag, like, you're working. So a little, maybe sometimes little things like that, but really, we're training hard. Well, fighters are even tougher on themselves. Yeah. What are you toughest on yourself about right now? If I ever feel like, say I'm training and I feel like I'm not giving 100 percent, I'm like, what am I doing? Snap out of it. Work, 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 work. So I try to pay attention to my body and how it's reacting. Or if it loses focus, I get right back into focus. So I'm always like constantly reminding myself, reminding myself, and how can I make it harder? You know what I mean? I was running in the rain yesterday. The rain thought I wasn't going to put the work in. I said, fuck that. I'm going in. It started raining harder. Things started poking me in the eye. I said, work, work, work. That most people would have stopped. So I thought to myself, hmm, most people would have stopped. So if I do it right now, then I'm doing something nobody's doing. That makes sense. San <laughs> Diego, the home of the Marine Corps. No, the Marines. Oh, yeah. We love rain, right? It ain't raining, it ain't rain. Oh, let's go. I no. like that. No. Dad, let's go. You got a chance to reflect on your journey. I know that with the world to become a world champion, you've you passed so much, so you got the house, now you got the car, yeah. you got it out the mud, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. have you had a chance to reflect on your journey? I have, I have, and, you know, it really keeps you so grateful. I'm blessed, you know, a lot of people put in hard work, and you know, sometimes luck don't go their way, you know. So I'm just blessed, grateful, you know, I take what I take, and thank you, God, and just keep moving forward, even though. Like, one thing I learned during this time, don't complain about nothing. You know what I mean? It's rain, don't complain, work. You know, you hurt a little bit, don't complain, work. You know, no complaining. God don't like complaining, so you just go to work. I don't know if you pass it, man, to go, but, um, Javante Davis just said that his contract is up after the next fight. I'm from it, whether it's just confirmed that to fight high. Your thoughts on that? Does that make the fight easier with Javante in the future? Does that make it easier to do? I think so. I think so, because Mayweather would always say that he's only fighting in-house, and they're only going to keep it within themselves, so... This does open up doors for us to get that on. So I think now there's a real strong possibility we make it work. And okay, your thoughts on him question. being a free agent, like just in general, he'll have a lot of options. You know, you won't be the only one, but you'll be one of the biggest ones. Yeah, I think that uh, as a free agent, obviously you're able to work with anybody, and that makes it way easier. It's like common sense. You know, like, oh, I don't have to fight on the zone, or I don't have to fight on ESPN, I have to fight anywhere. So. I think that it makes it way easier for me. Last one, you think he'll be open to that working with everyone, Javante? Uh, I think, I don't think he's weird like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that he'll fight anywhere. He'll know? take the toughest challenge. Yeah, yeah, I think he's, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't think that he's like scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Appreciate Brian, you, thank you. We just had the Oscars. Best boxing movie ever. Ooh, Cinderella Man. Easy. Cinderella Man. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do it with me. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so
<laughs> Clear the way. Yeah. Is this good right here? Is this Punches hard, so yeah. that jumps out. Makes us watch like every Sunday, you know, that's like a little bit. Yeah. She's always there. Okay, put it on. Raise my glass of wine and I'm going to watch it. He loves boxing, huh? Favorite fighter? We didn't tell him we're going to come. I was just like, oh. Has he bet him yet? Not yet. Well, he's not yet. They will today. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan's in this really good mood today, too. I think it would be really nice to him. Yeah. It's a good day to meet him. Thank you. 
So, yeah, just because my hands are kind of... I got to see if it's okay with them. How do you just know these things? Yeah, right. Hey, Joel, did you have a minute? Yeah, of course. Sorry. I just need him to get the training ready. Okay. Okay. And then after. After. Okay, okay. let me go. No problem. Are you kidding? Thank you. Cool if I catch up with you after the training. Pardon? Then. Cool if I catch up with you after Ryan's done training. Then. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Let's just do that. Because we, we, I got to get the, but I'm going to take care of you, okay. Brandon, okay? Right. I, won't, I won't disappoint you. Oh, yeah. damn, Ellie. Blue or black? Let me see. Sounds good. Because we're doing the live stream, and yeah. we need to have Ryan be oh, active, so that's why we're yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. What happened to the one billion? For programming whatever purposes. Whatever he needs to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. good. Watching. Huh? Are you doing okay? No. Hey Sean, what's up, brother? Did you have a minute, man? Talk about the fight, yeah. everything. Cool, man. All right, fighthype.com here with Sean Sugar Sean Garcia. Sean, yeah. man, um, you fighting on the same card? No, no, no. Okay. I, I, I don't box no more. Okay. Yeah, I used to box. I was six and zero as a pro, but I decided to take my, you know, my IQ, you know, in the training, in the training world. So I'm Ryan's assistant. You had you had some pretty good talent yourself as a fighter, though, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, I, I had all the IQ, I had the work ethic, but there's a different, you know, thing you need, the love for the sport, and I just didn't have it anymore. Yeah. But but you sound you still want to train though. So you yeah, I train. Love it yeah, in a different I, capacity. Yeah, in a different capacity. Yes. yes. So are you like one of the corner men for your brother yeah, now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm officially one of Ryan's corner men, his assistant. So I help him out. I do the mitts with him. I'm really nice at the mitts. Um, are we gonna see that today? Yeah. Yeah. If he does, if he wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. No, no, you were still saying, what else What else were you doing in, in camp? Oh, oh, yeah, I just uh, make sure all his things together. I want him to just focus on boxing. I do the mitts with him. And I just, you know, I have a different eye, you know. I have a good eye. And uh, I like to show Ryan a couple moves of my own. What, what do you think is the, if you could say, like, the number one thing, was it the head movement or the defense that you feel your brother is going to take forward in his career after the experience he got in his last camp? Um... He, he, he's just growing, you know, uh, just like he said, with experience and the longer he's just in the ring and all the, all the different styles, that he's just getting more experience, more stronger, his body's filling up. Yeah, he's, he's becoming into a beast that, you know, is about to be unleashed again. Do you think we get an early knockout like we did with Fonseca and Duno when these guys try to press your brother? And Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know. Um, yeah, like Ryan said, don't take your eyes off the screen because Ryan, Ryan right now, he's training uh, his hardest, you know. He's going hard in everything he does just so if it does come down to Tago giving us a challenge, we're going to be ready for it. How, how tough was this last year for your brother? Like, did you see him, like, kind of suffering, you know, kind of thing? Like, was yeah, it, yeah, he, yeah, he was going through his mental health issues, his uh, problems and everything, but we were all there for him. And, uh, you know, yeah, we were helping him, but I think he did it himself. He's very strong-minded. He went through it, and he accepted that he was going through it. And now, you know... He's learned from me. He's grown from it. Uh, he took it in, and it's a, it's a part of him. And he took that, but now now uh, uh, he's bringing it into the ring. What do you think is maybe the number one thing we misunderstand or, or, or don't know about your brothers? Uh, 
he wants to be the best one in the room at all times. He, he wants to be the best at everything he does. Everything he does, basketball, the game, anything he does, he's going to go harder. He's on the back. If someone's going hard, he's going harder. That's just his mentality. So when he's in the ring, no matter how hard you worked, he knows he worked hard. He said that he kind of feels like, and, and Roley actually said yeah. your brother's the hardest puncher in the division besides himself. Yeah. But um, your brother actually said he thinks Roley's kind of underestimated against Tank. Do you think that too? You, oh, as yeah. a trainer now, mm -hmm. sizing it up. What chances does he have? Oh, like, well, like Roley said, it's, I mean, it's not hidden. He hits harder than Javante. He's bigger than Javante. Um, yeah, he has an awkward style, and he ain't going to go back with Tank. He has the chin uh, uh, himself. So um, it's going to be a great fight. I feel like Javante cannot underestimate Roley's. He's hungry. He's determined to show what he got, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. Would you like a fight with your, with Ryan and Roley then? If, Ryan if Roley and Roley pulls it off? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if it comes down to it, that uh, Ryan and Roley's will fight one day. But, you know, they're, uh, Roley's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's growing in the sport. And this is his, champ his chance to prove himself against Tank. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, Ryan will fight anybody. I just mean because their sparring was better than a lot of fights. Yeah. Right? That was a, that was a hectic <laughs> sparring. But, hey, Roley's a big boy, dog. He's a big boy. And uh, Ryan is, you know, he was 17 back then. But... You know, just like with experience, you're going to grow from it. Ryan's way bigger now, you know. And, uh, yeah, he's going to feel comfortable in the ring with anybody, no matter if they're big, small, fast, strong. He knows what to do. You got a, a final prediction on that fight, though? Brody's against Tank. Tank. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if um, by the later rounds, if Javante hasn't hurt him or done anything, Brody's just going to keep coming and bullying him. Damn. That's my prediction. Yeah. And and um, obviously, too, the other big fight in the division, bro, Haney and Cambosis. Your yeah. brother picked Haney. Do you pick Haney as well? Uh, Yeah, only because of his name. And uh, Devin Haney is very, uh, 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 how do you say it, disciplined in the ring. He doesn't give you a, a good shot to land. He doesn't do stupid things. He's very technical. So I, I see Devin Haney pulling off with the win. Now uh, he can't slack off. You can't take away Cambosa's IQ and his, his hunger to win. So uh, if Devin can uh, stick discipline the whole entire time, it should be an easy win for him. How great were those fights between him and Ryan? Do you feel like it's going to happen at some oh, point? Oh, yeah, it's going to happen at some point for sure. But, yeah, like Ryan said, he, they were always in the finals together. They beat everyone in the division. When they met each other, everyone knew it was a great fight. Everyone surrounded the ring. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a great fight. Uh, and we can't wait for that to happen. You think it will be more like... De La Hoya Mosley or De La Hoya Mayweather? <laughs> I say De La Hoya Mosley. I mean, it could be technical, but Ryan, you know, he's going to bring the, the dog out of Devin, you know? You got to be a dog because, yeah, you can box Devin, but it's it's that extra push like, you know what? Nah, let's, I'm, I'm in here to knock you out. So we'll see. You know, Dev's dad will talk and, and the mm -hmm. dads will talk, but it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, that it's a friendly rivalry. It's a respectful rivalry. Oh, it's a between... very respectful rivalry. Yeah. We, Ryan and Devin done the, like, grew up in the amateurs together. They accomplished the same things. And uh, it's going to be a great fight when they meet in the pro world, or the world. No hard feelings, but we're here to take you out just like you're here to take us out. So uh, we can't wait for that to happen, but it's all love. And, and lastly, Sean, um, is it only Ryan? Or are you going to want to train oh, yeah, other right, fighters yeah. too at some point? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, right now, you know, I have Nikita Bobby. Uh, so that I've been, yeah, yep. I've been helping. What's up, Nikita? There he is. Right there. What's up, babe? Are you, are you uh, working with Ryan for this camp too, Nikita? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Training with him, yeah. We're working, we're working. April 9th, we're going to get that knockout. Bing! I'm telling you. In two rounds, it's going to be that left hook. It's going to be that left hook. He says it. He says right here. It's not going to be It's not going to be a chin. It's going to be right in his dome right here. Just boom. And he's going he's gonna, to... He just never, he just never seen that shot before, you know? He's just going to be like, oh, shit. Like... And then he's gonna just bomb out. Boom, 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 boom. That's it. Rewind Let's this choice. back at, on April 10th. Let's do Nikita, it. April 9th. April 9th. Well, 10th the day after yeah, the fight. After yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, but I'm Nikita, man, uh, you know, you know, we're always interested in, in, in when you when a guy really shares the ring with him. How how is that left hook from your perspective when you spar with Ryan? Oh is no, it? I never sparred. I, okay, no, no, okay. No, 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 never sparred. We're yep. two different weight classes. But no, we're just we're just um we're, we're friends. We're teammates. You know, we're just I I came to learn a lot and um. No, 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 like, again, in the sparring, that left hook, that power, you guys are going to see it April 9th. It's a whole, I love it. I love that left hook. Unnatural. You know and what, what, I mean? what about yourself, Nikita? What can we expect next time you're in the ring, brother? 
Um, I got a lot to prove my next fight. Thanks, I, Sean. Thank I, you, I, Sean. Hey, Thanks, Sean. No, 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 Sean. No, no, no. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Damn. He left me. How'd you know? I alienated him, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> but my next fight, no, my next fight, um, you know, like my, my last two fights, I didn't, I was going through a lot. I didn't look, I didn't look good at all. I'll give myself like a deeper, a deep, you know, a deeper form and stuff. I have a lot to prove, and that's why I'm here. You know, I almost lost myself a couple months ago, and it's like, now it's like, I'm surrounded with people just like me, you know, just I, I needed that motivation, and I got it. I got that spark, I got that line in me. And um, I've never trained the way I trained for all of my 11 fights, never. Just the way I'm training here, just I'm so motivated, you know, just being uh, being around the same people like me. And um, yeah, I got a lot to prove, but I'm actually excited for that, because I know this next fight, I'm, a, I'm just gonna be a whole different breed. And is that is that April night? Like he did the no, next no, no, fight no, no. So I'm fighting. Fight. Okay, so I can't say when I'm fighting, but it's gonna be soon. Okay. Let me know soon. Thank you, man. Good, good Thank to get you. the update from you, bro. Thank you for Appreciate sure. It. April 9th, baby. Let's do it. Thanks. South Texas. Sorry. Hey Ryan, just just one I had, man. Um, what do you think with the last camp you were with? That stable is the best thing you're gonna carry forward as a fighter. Like, was it the head movement, or well, that's gonna pay dividends for the rest of your career? You no, know, I think. I would think they really instilled in me just what it takes, you know, what it takes to be uh, at, at the top. Because I never seen that growing up from Victorville. I never seen what it what it is like to be a superstar and you know how to handle situations. And obviously, Cano's ring IQ is very, very good. And I took a lot of stuff from that. And it's something that you just internalize and see, and you know how to do. You know what I mean? Just like Mayweather, you just do it. You know, you just be great just by, you know, you have to have a good feel for the game. And I think I do, especially now. So uh, I'll be probably taking in just those memories of watching somebody that's a superstar and, able, and knowing how to handle it and uh, just knowing how he's so in control in the ring at all times. And that's kind of what I pride myself is like, I'm, I'm in control of this, you know, don't let him make, make sure you neutralize everything they're trying to do and make sure that you always doing what you want to do and adjust on the fight. You know, I've been watching uh, a lot of uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. I always do because I feel like I, I bring my shots from my shoulder a lot. He does too. And the way he's able to just snap off a hook, you know, out of nowhere, you know, they come in and he's always checking them with that. And, you know, most of the time he knocks them out. So it's kind of like I have a lot of similarities on, you know, the way I throw my shots. But not saying I'm sure. Stop, <laughs> Robinson. Don't go and do all that. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> see, yeah, because everybody be looking to just shit on me. I swear. <laughs> but you know, I have that in me. You don't, don't get, don't get a mistake. Ryan Garcia says he's Ray Robinson. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's over, man. It's over. It's already out there. <laughs> Damn it. But you know what? I'm good. I'm great too. Go see. Ryan, I know you. I know you see like Joe Lewis. Um, yeah, I do. Well, what, what about Joe Lewis? The way that he was able to, uh, like, when he throws a punch, he like stays in there and then watches him while he's throwing a punch and boom, and then hits him. You know what I mean? Like, like he just crowd you, but he knows where he's at and boom, and then he just. He just whacks the shit out of you, like. But he's able, like, to, to be comfortable where he's, wherever he's at, and like, he knows how to like lean himself on you and just boom, just fucking crack you. Like, it just <laughs> how he was able to like slight things, <laughs> position himself right, and then just explode. like he just yeah explode. Like he he he's like he's not forcing anything. He just boom 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 and then just lays it on you. He had such a bright hand. Was fucking ass. Textbook boxing. Textbook. And then obviously Roy Robinson, he kept his hands out, but he's yeah, always bro, moving. He's always moving to the left, moving to the left, yeah. boom, checking with hook. And then out of nowhere, he go boom, 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 boom. And then you're out. And the perfect you know, boxer puncher. Yeah, because he's just feeling your, your body. And then once he, you know, he just, you got to feel it. I don't know how to explain. It's like, 
it's like music. You gotta feel. You gotta have that touch. If you don't have that touch. You're missing something. Like, you, mean, you gotta have it. What do you think about this turnout? Pretty cool, huh? Ah, yeah. No. No rap. <laughs>
How old were you? I was there. It was my friend. <laughs> what are you? Were you guys still friends yeah, after? It was a basketball game, and then he kicked our ball, and so Ryan threw his ball. And it was a rap after that. And he thought he was going to beat my ass in the street. He said, oh, this is a street park. This ain't box. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then when I see him, he threw up in front of me. I was like, I ain't going to soccer. And he had he as well. He had wax <laughs> all over his face. But then his mom came up to me and was like, thank you for working on stuff. Why did she do that? Yeah, it's part of that. But also, the fact was the left. You know what? His name was Devo. No cap. Really? He was Devo, yeah. He slapped Devo. He slapped Devo. He didn't let Devo see my chain. He didn't make your hand. It was so funny. Was it the left or the right, right? I was slapping it with my left. Uh, every time he came in, and he started crying, I said, no, my God. Just go. Oh, uh, the other guy. Oh, I got it. I got it. I think Logan and Arnold Fortune ever had a lead in the slap table. That's crazy. No, I'm not going to let somebody just slap me two hours. That's crazy. Like, that's so stupid. You think if The Rock was hosting, he would have still thrown the slap? <laughs> nah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna slap the rock? He's so big and just like that's that. Yeah, right. Maybe you would. I don't. I don't know. But then once the rock grabs you, it's over. Yeah. It's so big, right? Who? Can't slap the rock. Weight class is for a reason. Joe, have you given Ryan an all jean suit? What? An all jean suit? All jean suit. Ryan's got his own. Yeah. Um, it's good. Well, I, I, <clears throat> we did go shopping one time. And, and, uh, what was it? Ryan's uh, stores. What did he he said, I, I could buy that shit. Why is it 250 No. No, it was like a, a golf shirt. You know, just like everybody, three bucks. It was like a big one. Or maybe we wouldn't have had <laughs> but no, it is, they're, 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 that is a nice company. It is, right? Yeah, they're hey, Sandra. Sandra. Shout out Sandra. You can get a deal. Just promote it. But whatever the case, the bottom line is, yeah, it's quality. We're here. Stuff. We're we had a lot of memorable stuff first. happen. Gatorade, uh, yeah. 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 No, that was like the first couple of days we were in camp. Yeah, that was in, in Oregon. It was great, and you did great in that. And uh, the basketball um, yeah. players. No, he's been in the league. It's a matter of the league. Everything happens for a reason. Great, great ball. Because he knows a lot about boxing. Who surprised you? He knows more about boxing than I do. He's really the best kid. No, he knows every boxer. Like, boxers yeah. that I don't even know about. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Damian Lillard. I'm like, a little bit playing the NBA with two years in. But he said he's always watching your videos. Yeah, he does. Shout out to him. He can do it. Smart. That's how he learns all his shit. Because you interview everyone. Not just the stars, you know. His, his four-year-old son had a stars to be, right? Yep. His, his, son, his four-year-old son had a birthday yesterday. Give him a shout-out. Oh, did he? Shout-out. Maybe Damien Lillard. <laughs> you can't put on music? Or uh, this is after Austin. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to invite him from St. Louis? Yes, I'll do it. You love boxing. You're crazy. One day. When I'm not getting trained for a fight. I don't really like... You see, he has a fight. You see the end result. Yeah, it's been a good 
we know what we didn't do, we didn't go to breakfast. No, you don't want to do No, 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 no. Um, I mean, what is he well, I, I did come uh, a couple of weeks ago. I just see the police come on. Uh, uh, you you want to film the work You want me to stick with him? I think that's probably yeah, the most, you want to stick with him? You want me to encourage uh, uh, I'm going to have to send the thing I saw. It's going to be a little hard on him. I know what he was inside the ring. I know how he trained. I'll focus on the work Sure. Yeah, but yeah. while well, he's my office. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
Ten seconds. Okay, you didn't miss uh, one. That, that's good. That, that, that's a light heavyweight left hook in a 35 pound body. It's pretty amazing. Hmm? Yeah, you don't want to get hit by that. That's a fact. That's a fact. No fact. No. I mean, either hand, to say the truth, but that left hook is. This other... says the dirty work. That's how it's happening. Dirty. You didn't get enough credit. It'll buzz you, and that'll. Do the number. Well, you, you know, I think your best day with the right hand was yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah you really found the, the rhythm with it. Yeah. And once you found it, you stayed with it. Yeah. That was nice. Hey, oh, nice. <laughs> so just for the fans, right? I mean, there's like three or four different drills you can do on. You can do a parry. You can do a, you can do a block. You can do a slip. And, and a weave, even. Right? Just kind of walk whoever would, would be watching you do this. What are you doing right there? This is the block. Right. Block on. So it's a block and counter. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see the block and counter. There it is, right there. See. That's a block and count on both sides. Uh -huh. There it is. And then, what's the next one? You got slit, 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 slit. Now, can you count off those slips? Right there, there's a hook. How about the right hand? There it is, right? See, let's bring that coming at you, right? Shoulder roll. As a, as in terms of uh, a fighter, like almost getting oh. a new Ferrari, yeah. like yeah. we're drafting a quarterback yeah. with a monster arm. And yeah, it's, he's on another level, <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Hey, but they're great haircuts. Like they're working, man. <laughs> you gotta pay for you can get, right? Exactly. Gotta pay what you get. All right. So yeah. here we go. Sean, you got time? Henry, you got time? My dad does. All right. I got the time. Uh -huh. This drill is for when you're up close, you want to keep your hands tight. Mm -hmm. Always up. So, you see, everything more tighter, but everything's important. Pretty much you can do what you do on a, a 
on the first reflex on this, but it's a tighter drill. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And is there up more? Yep. Uh, you're a little bit closer? Yep. Yeah. I like to go close sometimes. Yeah. Come on, motherfucker. Come on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you like that. Marquez doing too much growing yeah. up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't drink piss, but other than that, like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that reference, though. No, I don't. Marquez did that in 24-7. He did what? He drinks his own urine. Oh, stop it. <laughs> they got it on tape, Joe. Don't believe it. It's on tape. It's real. Trust me, I watched that through it. The sad I'm part is he still didn't win the fight. I'm glad I'm not on the internet. <laughs> Sacrifices to be great, you know? <laughs> he lost uh, I know. I'm, I'm not drinking uh, this, bro. Really? Yeah. Uh, so many, I know there's an old expression. I really took the piss out of him. <laughs> right. Good. Henry, what do we got, a minute? What do I know? What do we got? Do it for the first time, and it didn't look quite the same. <laughs> Would they be like? <laughs> it wasn't that good. No, it wasn't. <laughs> right, time in. It's, uh, it's different than regular speed bed. I'm gonna go viral today. Oh, that's the hardest you're gonna hit. hit, hit today. <laughs> I didn't yeah. think that's that low. I know. This is a good drill. I heard a story like Roy Jones Jr. His dad used to make him hang underneath the thing if he got him, went up. There's nails on the, oh, the top. <laughs> that if what? Kind of reminds me of that. that kind of makes me happy. 
Old school Fox. boxing dads were rough, huh? That's right. Jeez. They were rough. <laughs> <laughs> also, Roy Jones used this draw, huh? Kind of, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Did you see it? Nope. But I heard stories. Alright. What do we got here? happy today, man, to be back into it. Hell yeah, man. Just, you just know the fight's near, so you get happier. I've been sparring all these times, you know. You're not winning shit, Smart. I want to win. It's, it's good to see the sport make you happy, man. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> Guys, everybody watching, I gotta just zoom in on Oscar's Ferrari for a minute. God damn. That fucking Ferrari's amazing. Alright, back to work. Spence is a guy that's probably as big as him, very technical. I don't know, do you feel people are riding off Ugas a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Ugas is always going to be a difficult fight for anybody. Yeah. He beat John Porter, you know, so they, they gave it a shot. You know, he's hard to win. He's like, right, he's Cuban? Cuban guy. Yeah, that's why. That's why. You know, yeah. Oscar uh, Valdez. Yeah. I think I've seen him fight Bruno Lopez, yeah. which he's kind of a mover, but not really. Like, would, would you even consider Shakur a mover? I mean, I mean he definitely, if he, definitely not a stayer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Valdez will hurt him at some point in the fight, win or lose? Maybe, maybe. That's a possibility, you know, because Valdez has tricky shots, you know. It's yeah. just, it's the kind of punches that, well, like, Eddie's camp trains on tricky shots, like shots that, you know, you're, it's setup shots. So he always has to be on his P's and Q's, which Shakur is good at. Did you ever back in the camp? No, no, he's just been too small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you look right in the real quick? camera right. and just say, don't close your eyes? Alright. Don't close your eyes. <laughs> don't, do not close your eyes. Let's go. Keep them open. You never know what you're gonna make. Perfect. You know, I, I just say to myself, like, the way I fight, you gotta be paying attention. Because, you know, nobody knew I was gonna throw that body shot out of nowhere. You know, I look lazy, I was like this. You know, I just, oh. You gotta keep your eyes open. Look at what happened to Fonseca. I was just doing this before you knew it. So, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I'm careful. It was good, and I actually thought you were going to stop Luke Campbell in the first when he turned around and put his hands up. That could have been a stoppage, but I didn't want to. I don't. I didn't want to win that way. So I knew I could have hit him at least one more time, but I was like, but I knew I was in control of the fight. But right, you sound your punches sound strong. You feel 
Like I said, I just come into my own, you know. I know how to I know how to throw my punches. That's one thing I've always known how to do. And as I get older, they're just coming with more velocity. Boom, boom. You know, everything you got to be careful. Ryan, you know uh, Joe, Joe used to train Michael Nunn. Have you wa you watched Michael Nunn? Yeah, he always telling me about Michael Nunn. Uh, I think Michael Nunn was he was on. I mean. He was a beast. Like nobody was beating him back in the day. He Oscar, was, uh, can I get a, just a minute with you, Oscar? Yeah, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. What's up, brother? Always great to see you. Always good to see you. You, you know, you're one of my favorites. Thanks, brother. So, all right, fighthype.com with the legendary, one of the all-time great fighters, Mr. El Nino de Oro himself. El Nino, <laughs> Oscar de la Hoya. What's up, brother? Oscar, you ever? Um, is it ever funny to you that, that this kid you're promoting, Ryan Garcia, not only is fast like you were from Southern California, good looking, but his best punch is the left hook too? It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> um, he might be faster. He might be stronger. Um, you know, he's a he's growing. His body's growing. He's getting. He's maturing into his uh, into his body. So it's. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen the best of Ryan. You know, look, everything happens for a reason. He was away for 15 months. People are still talking about him. Everything leads to Ryan, so it's it's exciting to uh, to have him back. April 9th, I think um, a lot of eyeballs are going to be watching him and waiting to see what happens. You know, and Otago is a short, aggressive guy. Sure. Last couple times, it's been Fonseca or Duno who tried that. They got out of there in two yeah. rounds. Do you think it's an early knockout for Ryan in this fight? Well, I mean, the advantage that Ryan has is that he knows how to fight tall. Um, he knows how to fight inside, and he can fight tall. And I think Joe Goose and the, the the things that I've seen that they're working on, it's only going to add to his to his arsenal. It's going to make him a dangerous fighter. Um, the more people wait in fighting Ryan, the more dangerous it's going to get for them because all he's doing is learning, growing, absorbing. And with Joe Goose now in his corner, you have a professional that knows the game inside and out. So. Um, yeah, good things to come from uh, from Ryan Garcia. When you were in this spot, back when you were champ, whether it was Carpentier or Col Colby, yeah. did you think quick knockout? Or was that not the approach you had that got those quick knockouts? So yeah, it's interesting because you asked that. Um, there, there's, there's different levels of, of fighters, right? When you know that you're facing a guy that you can knock out, you want to knock him out. You don't want to risk anything. You want to go out there quick and fast and just go for the knockout. Um, and, and Ryan has that. He has that killer instinct. But who knows? He's been away for 15 months. You know, we'll have to, we have to uh, be patient and, 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 and see how he performs the first couple of rounds. Um, but then again, Ryan has that skill set, that mind frame of, of, you know, having that killer instinct. So who knows? It just all depends on how to go takes the punch and what kind of game plan to go is coming in with. And sometimes, Oscar, we see you just call it like you see it, off the cuff. Um, I remember with, with uh, Roly Romero, you said, Ryan, this guy isn't on your level. After you saw him fight Mourinho's, I think yeah. it was. Um, do you think, what chances do you give him to pull off the upset with Tank? And do you want to match Ryan with the winner of that fight? <clears throat> well, there, there's, there's a few interesting fights coming up. Cambosos and, and Haney. There's uh, Tank with, uh, with Roly's. Which I love. I love all the guys. I mean, they're they're great fighters, and and these types of fights are pick 'em fights. Um, I think uh, I think I mean kudos to Haney that he's flying out to uh, to um, Australia and, and facing the world champion out there in Combosos. Kudos to him. But that's who Haney is. He's a fighter who uh, who believes in his abilities and he believes he can win. And and I love that fight. Um, you know, with Tank and and Rollies. There's so much power involved in that fight. I'm, I'm gonna go out of my way here and say that whoever lands that first big bomb is gonna win the fight. You know, it's um, both guys are skilled, they're talented. Rollies is a little more reckless, uh, leaves himself open just a bit. Tank is compact, he's very skilled, he's a master. So I don't know, who knows? I, I don't see Tank taking him apart. But I can see Tank maybe uh, kind of taking advantage of a few openings that Rollies might, might, you know, leave himself open with. So, so it's a good fight. Yeah. Some people compare him to Ricardo Mayorga. Is that fair, Oscar? I, I'm sure they have the same punching power, but <laughs> I, I think Rollies was a little better. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, think, I think Rollies has... He was undisputed. Has, sure. Yeah. But I think Rollies has more skill. He has uh, more boxing IQ. 
Um, it looks like he loves what he's doing. And uh, yeah, it just should be a great fight. Maybe you just made Mayorga look worse than he really is, Oscar. <laughs> and that's why after you feel that After a two-year layoff, yeah. yeah. After a two-year right. Year. And uh, and lastly, Oscar, um, about you know, Roly, uh, excuse me, uh, Ryan fighting the winner and all that. Charlo Munguia was discussed. Mm. Um, there's so much history there with with those people at Showtime. Sure. Uh, yeah. and, at PBC. Yeah. Right. Right. Does right. that. Does that make it hard, uh, hard to, to, if the business makes sense, to go ahead and do it? Because, you know, Virgil, all, all the top fighters at 47 and 54 are there. Right. Ryan versus Tank. And then uh, uh, even Jaime Munguia with the Charlo fight. Like, it, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Look, I think, I think, it's, I, I think that look, fighters want to fight each other. That's the bottom line. And everybody knows me. I work with everybody. I've worked with Bob Arum. I've worked with uh, Al Heyman. I've worked with everybody to make fights happen. There's this business is a dirty business, you know. And 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 there's a lot going on that people don't know. Um, I was not gonna make the Mungia fight and exclude the Zone, who are Mungia's partners. Uh, they built Mungia. I, it just wouldn't be right, you know. I mean, imagine if I told. Al Heyman or Showtime, like, uh, you guys have to be out of the picture, um, you know, to make this fight happen. It's just it's just not good business. So, you know, that's what happened. But, look, am I confident this fight can happen in the near future? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think when both guys are ready, when the time is right, I think the time is right now, but when uh, everybody comes to their senses, I think this fight can happen. Yeah. Th thanks so much, Oscar. Always an honor right, just to talk with you, man. You got it, man. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you, I got I got to bow to you, man. I got to bow to you. I'll bow to you, bro. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's Oscar De La Hoya, yeah. damn it. Good job, man. That's one of the greats. He is. Six Oh, sorry. I'm about to try to do with you. This poor guy. So everyone can get it. However, Ryan wants to do it. Hey, Ryan. Can he play the young you? No doubt. Yeah, we, I really can't. Never in the movie. We were talking about who's faster and who had the better left hook. Pretty close. There's no doubt that he does. Oscar has, hey, no, Oscar's nasty. You guys throw it differently, too. We do, we do. Be careful. Nice. Oscar had a stronger base. Mine comes out like a whip.
160 anyways? Yeah, yeah, I would have. Oh, all right, never mind. Yeah, I, I would have up. I always like to, Oscar would have got to the city, then we yeah, fought Wiki Wright. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, want, I wanted to make history, man, you know, and I wanted to try and make history, so. Yeah. Oscar, yeah your resume is crazy. I should have stood at 147. Yeah. 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 That's where I felt beast, yeah. Yeah. I felt, I felt beast moment. Mistakes and bracelets. You know, be honest with yourself, like, wow. All right, because like if you don't, you're gonna end up, you know, losing. Like that's the thing. Like if you're not honest with yourself, then you're not gonna get better. And I think that he just thought for some reason, like he made no mistakes. But if you watch, like you do make a lot of mistakes, my guy. Like, and you get hit with hard shots. It's not. It's not like, like if you get hit with like, crazy shots, okay. Like maybe pick your hands up a little bit better. But like if you're getting fucking boom all the time, you gotta pick up. You, somewhere along this line, you got to know I'm doing something wrong. He's with boxes missing, though. He's just got to be able to back it up. You know, yeah. you no, the that's, day, a, that's, that's the, the best thing, like, to back it up, even if you're talking about I mean, yeah, you can go any route you want. So whatever comes authentic to you. Like, some days I do feel like talking my shit. Some days I don't. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'm like, bro, oh, I've already said whatever I want. But, like, that's just me. Like, I'm very competitive. When I'm playing basketball, I'm talking shit to you. Suck. And I just start scoring on you. Or if I'm playing video games, like, you guys are not going to beat me as you're not. You know, and I'll try to take it to another level. So that's just my mentality and everything. When I talk shit, I have no hard feelings for anybody. Like, if I say I'm going to beat this guy, like, to me, it's not talking shit. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, <laughs> Maybe he, he jumped that, that line of just talking. No, but he, he got a little disrespectful. Yeah, like, because yeah, yeah. he was like, nobody's fighting, nobody, like, bro. And then, and then, like when he's really going in, going in, it's like Earl Spence, kinda, it's not that serious. Bro. But Earl Spence, you know what I mean? <laughs> like relax. What, what was your take on, on Earl Spence? Like just win, and like hopefully you'll get that fight sooner or later. You know what he said about Earl, like I don't, I don't. I mean, like I've never told anybody you ain't fighting nobody. Like I just say like, if they talk shit to me, I'm like, are we, are we all really quote unquote not fighting anybody? But then again, we are fighting professionals. It's just how you look against the guys you're supposed to be. I know for sure I make statements. Like, yeah. No, he's not supposed to be in there with me. You know, if you fight a guy you're supposed to beat and look like shit, I might say a little something like, "Come on, bro, step it up," because you know I'm coming. Your take on Arrow? Just love it. Arrow Spence, man. He said a few things about Arrow. I don't know if you heard that part, but he's yeah, yeah, that's just yeah. weird. Like Arrow Spence, like is a beast. Like, what are you talking shit for? Like, you can't talk shit. You just gotta say it. Like me, even with Cervante Davis, I say he's a fucking great ass fighter. I always end it with your good fighter. I give credit where credit's due. Like, you're great at, like, fuck, dude. <laughs> like, let's get it on. It's going to be good. Uh, same thing with uh, Arrow Spence. Great fighter. Like, let's give, like, that's, it's just facts. Like, what are we talking about? Is he going to be the same come um, this fight against or Dennis Ugas? Because he's been through so. a lot. I know. Eye surgery. But that's the grit. Like, let's go. My eye got messed up. Whatever. I got a car accident. Whatever. Let's keep going. I, I respect that. You keep going. You keep going. It's rainy. You keep going. Uh, so I got nothing but respect for Aero Spence. I wish him the best. I want him to win. Uh, I don't know what he thinks about me, but I don't care. I think he's a great fighter. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Take a break before you start. Cool. Cool. Can you get out of here with Joey? Yeah. Just be very smart, be very careful on how he's doing it. Meaning, you can you can put a lot of pressure on a fighter without throwing a punch and get your opponent tired. Um, 
But if he can do that and throw the right right combinations and make Shakur Stevenson go back, it, it can be a very interesting fight. It's interesting because uh, Shakur told me the biggest challenge to him in his eyes is the heart of Oscar because sure. Oscar's not going to quit. He's right. like, hey, that's a dangerous thing. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, the heart is always dangerous if you have skills like Oscar Valdez. So, you know, skills, power, um, heart, it's, it's a pretty dangerous combination. So, yeah, both guys have their hands full. Hands full. They both have great, uh, great trainers in their corners, and uh, yeah, I think it's a great fight. Creo que sigue para Jaime Mujia, ya que no me pudo dar la pelea con este Jonathan. Estamos este revelando, ¿cómo se dice? Chini, sé cómo se dice. Este, eh, estamos viendo, pues sí, viendo las opciones. Este, quizás una pelea. Con una... Hey, that was awesome. We got everything. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. So happy no, I thank you. Out. Thank you for coming. Yeah, no, I always I'm... try whenever I can. Thank you for coming. That was awesome. I had a good time. Give us lots of support, please. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> hey Joe, you mind if I talk with you for like an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. No, it was my pleasure. Well, I guess I'll see you next in. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I can't wait. I can't wait. Thanks, Joe. How you doing, brother? Good, good. Uh, how you doing, bro? Good, good, good. Quick, yeah. uh, quick four questions. Yeah, let me do this and then I'll come right to it. Thanks, okay? brother. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Do me, do me one favor, sure. though. Just give me some. I mean, yeah, I, I don't need my nose hair. I've, I've seen uh, you in previous interviews say that. So I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. This maybe, is good then, Joe. Maybe we'll do this so you're not shooting into that. Yeah, yeah. And you get Ryan singing in the back. Or we can shoot there, whatever. Yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. That's okay. good. All right, let's just do it. Yeah. All right. All right, fighthype.com. Sean Zatel here with. The man running the gym, Mr. Joe Goosen, trained so many great champions from Michael Nunn to Diego Corrales. Uh, Joe, do you feel like you almost, in terms of, of having a fighter, like you got a new Ferrari, a new sports car, uh, like a like drafting a quarterback who's got a monster arm, all the talent in the world, you know? Yeah, no, you, you, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't argue that. You know, Ryan is a very special fighter, very special personality. You know, he's, he's got a lot going for him. It's one of the reasons why I actually packed up and came down here. There's very few fighters that could draw me out of my comfort of my own gym, my own home, and uh, away from some of their fights. Luckily, I have a very competent uh, associate, Jonathan Wally, who's training my two heavyweights, my three heavyweights, Chris Ariola. Uh, Giovanni Bruzon and uh, Gergen Hovanissian, okay, so they're all three heavyweights, but they're in good hands back there, so to, to leave that and to come here and to zero in on Ryan, it, there's, there's got to be something that appeals to me above and beyond almost anything else, and he's an amazing, he's an amazing guy, he's an amazing athlete, he's a beast at training, I mean... He is exceeds all expectations that you might have. I mean, last night we ran. He ran twice yesterday. We probably did ten miles. Uh, we put in, you know, dozens of rounds in the gym. Uh, he sparred fifteen rounds with three different guys last week. Uh, he's just in beast mode right now, and he's obsessed and possessed with. You know, his physicality, his mental outlook, his spiritual outlook, everything. He's so focused. He's, he's zeroed in on everything. And um, he's in a great mood. We, we've been having a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. It's been hard work. But we're having a blast together. He's got a good group of guys around him. Uh, James, his brother Sean, uh, Nick uh, Bobby, you know, the fighter. Nikita Bobby, uh, yeah. Santos. 
uh, Gio is cook, Sip is strength coach. Just named off, you know, six great guys. His mom and dad, we've had a lot of fun together. It, it, it's, it's been, like I say, it's been a very good experience for me. And uh, it, it's kind of why I came down here. I knew it would be good. I knew the people involved, but expressly, you know, Ryan. Um, I know his talent. I spotted his talent six years ago. He worked with me in my gym. We hit it off then. I, I tried to do some business with him. Um, they went in another direction, which is fine. You know, no hard feelings. That's why we can come back together. There was no hard feelings. Uh, it was the difference between a couple of business deals, and they went one way. And then six years later, it's come full circle, and I'm back with the kid that I had a lot of interest in signing and training back then. So it, it, for me, it, it's a natural. I'm, I'm just picking up where I left off six years ago. You know, uh, upon you know this this pairing coming together, yeah. some of the writers and whatnot, they they wondered, will Joe have to play disciplinarian sometimes in this relationship? Kind of make sure the kid shows up on time, those kinds Not of things. Not at we all. I'm telling you right now, Ryan is like all the great fighters I've ever trained. They're on time. They come into the gym, they turn on a different switch, they get focused, and uh, gear, they gear up towards their workout. When the switch is off and you go out, everyone smiles at you. But when Ryan comes in the gym, he's like that, especially on sparring day. He's, uh, he doesn't fool around. Uh, I don't need to discipline him in any manner, shape, or form. And, and I'm not really what you call a disciplinarian. I'm just a hard worker. And Well, they I, say you don't tolerate any shit. Pardon? They say you don't tolerate any nonsense. Well, I mean, what fighter worth anything is going to give you nonsense? Most guys that are at this level are striving for the top level. They're not going to give you nonsense. They're going to they're gonna give you everything they got. Um, well, I guess there were these great fighters in the past like Camacho or... You know, other guys that were talented, got, but they wouldn't, you know. You've got guys that would undo a lot of hard work in the gym, outside the gym. That is not the case here. It's normally not the case. The, the, it, normally, these guys understand exactly the danger of this sport, and they understand the, um, the need to really be obsessive and possessive about what you're doing and um, I, I don't think anybody's fooling themselves so you there's a lot of cooperation from the guys that are really focused and you know they're destined for great things they know they're destined for great things too you know because you can see it they can see it they can look in the mirror and know who they are and where they're going okay just like I mean, if I can spot that, you don't think they can spot it in themselves? Of course they do. They know where they're going. And most, mostly all of these type of guys that are at that level, they will apply themselves uh, in a manner befitting where they're going. And that's what Ryan does. He is, he is in beast mode right now, as I call it. Um, he's so focused uh, on everything he's doing. I'm not amazed by it. I expected it. Because, you know, if you're going to call me anyway, and if you know what I'm about, why would you call me if you weren't planning on working hard, you know? So, yeah, and I love it. I mean, um, I don't care what time, a day or night, we're, I'm ready. You know, Ryan's, you know, run in the morning sometimes, and he'll call me at 9.30, 10 at night, 10.30, let's go run, boom. I'm in my car, I, he just lives 100 yards from me. And, you know, we'll meet at the park, boom, we'll go. He's, he's really attacking this fight like it's for all the marbles. Now, there's other, there's other writers who want to speak with you, Joe, so I just want to wrap it up with the other two fights in the division. Um, Tank and Romero, uh, what chances do you give Romero pulling off that upset? I give every fighter a chance against other fighters. Uh, you know, I've said it before, sometimes the fight you think may be your easiest fight turns into your toughest and vice versa, and that's true, that happens. Most fighters will tell you somewhere along their career, whether it be amateur or pro, they go, oh, this will be an easy fight. Turns into a dog fight. Look at Isaac Cruz, the fight that turned into, okay? Look we all fight. thought he would knock him Look out in the six. Look at the fight with Barrios. Yeah. Okay, uh, so 
you know. Uh, I mean, do you see a method to the madness with Romero? It, it, it's not you, with the way you mean with the way uh, Roly fights. Mm -hmm. Well, Roly's a he's he's a dynamic fighter. I mean, he's he's explosive. He's hard hitting. Um, he's daring. Takes chances. Um, believes in himself. Look, I mean, he's a threat. And if he wasn't, um, they wouldn't have, you know, made this competitive fight. This is a competitive fight, you know. And I'm sure uh, Rowley's looked at Tank's other fights and said, you know what, I, I see flaws here. And I'm going to capitalize on it. We're going to go to work. He's probably strategizing. And conversely, I'm sure Tank's doing the same thing. They've all got good people behind them. You know, they've got smart uh, people that are working on strategies, uh, conditioning, um, sparring, game plans. Uh, you know, at, at, again, at this level, there's very competent people behind the scenes. Everyone's here for a reason. That's right. That's right. That's right. So right. I'm actually looking more forward to this Tank Davis fight because it's Roley than maybe all the other ones that he's had with Isaac Cruz, with Barrios, and with Santa, or Santa Maria. You know? and, and, uh, uh, I think this one may be the most intriguing of, of them all. I'm with you, Joe. I, I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah. lastly, um, Same here. Haney and Cambosis. Uh, this, who, do you, who do you see having the edge in that matchup? Which one? Haney and Cambosis. That's a tough question. Um, you know, Devin is such a smart fighter. Um, and so is Cambosis. He proved that in that last fight. That I think if, if this, that fight on the board, I don't think anybody's a runaway favorite in that fight. I don't know what the numbers are, but I would imagine up on the board in Vegas, that's going to probably be... Um, I think the numbers will probably favor it going some distance. Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll probably be over ten and a half, something like that. And then, in terms of uh, who's the favorite, that's hmm. a tough one too. That could easily be, you know, close to a pick 'em fight. Even if, you know, money comes in on one guy or the other and those things, you know, move around a little bit, I, I just think that's a, that's a pick em fight, you know, for me, you know. They're both very competent and capable boxers. They're smart, crafty guys, you know. And uh, Cambosis is riding high right now. So, you know, he's, he's probably feeling pretty good about himself. And so is Devin. I mean, he should be. Devin's... Very crafty guy. I've seen him in my gym. He's smart. He's he's a handful, man. He 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 does it all. You talk about a hard worker. He's a beautiful fighter. I, look, like I said, you I might have to go in the corner against him. Uh, well, one sure. day, one maybe, day. Yeah, sure. But Ryan, but, yeah. You know, if it isn't Devin, it'll be someone else just as competent, just as capable. They're all tough at the top. You know, they all bring their own magic that they possess, you know. Some guys have different abilities than others, but at the top of the game, they're all tough outs. Joey, great trainer, good Irishman. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for your time. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you, uh -huh. thank you Joe. Yeah. Appreciate it. So I hope that went well. For oh, it went great. Thank okay, you. Good. Always does. Good. Have a good one, Joe. All right, everybody. I think that about wraps it up here in San Diego for Ryan Garcia's workout. We got to talk to the great Oscar De La Hoya, got to talk to trainer Joe Goosen, his brother and assistant trainer Sean Garcia, and of course, we got to talk to Ryan himself. So that was the best part. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed tuning in, and keep it locked in on Fight Hype. See you later.